Today, I want to talk about what's in your toolkit. And this is a toolkit that I made. It's a pencil pouch. I sell a course called the Pencil Pouch Purse Course. And you can learn all about how to do the finishing on this. And it includes several different patterns, including this one, which I particularly love. And what I love about these pencil pouches is that they're expandable. So you can put a lot of stuff in here and what I love about it then is once it's packed full, it actually sits up. Now, if you are making this as a purse and you add a handle to it, this is actually large enough for a small bottle of water. You just got to find a bottle that fits in that particular size. And those little mini bottles will fit really well. You can still put your phone, a lipstick, tissues, whatever else it has to do. But for a toolkit, let's look at what I put into my toolkit. Okay, so here on the back, let's start with the pockets. This little particular area right here, I reserve for my room key. Yes, I am known for misplacing my room key during a trip. It seems to happen almost every single time. And in my defense, it's usually because I'm excited about something. I go back to my room. I let myself in. I put it on the dresser. I get whatever it is. And I head out the door. The door clicks. And I realized I locked my room key in the room. I always leave it in there. I don't misplace it anywhere else. But how many times have I locked it in the room? more than I'm willing to admit right now. So this is nice because you can put it right back in immediately. You can look down at the purse and you'll be able to see if you have it, um, you know, cause it looks just like that. And if it's one of those electronic ones, you don't even have to take it out of the purse. You can just hold it up to the door and you are in. So that's what I reserve that for. This first pocket, I don't get into on a regular basis, or I don't leave it unzipped and hanging open on my desk like I do with the other pocket. So this pocket is the perfect place to put my cash, and this would represent a credit card. I'd put that in there. I also like to use these little notebooks, um, so I have something to write with, so I'll stick that in there. So if I have something to write with, I'm going to want a pen, right? my new favorite pen that goes in there. Then this area here stays open most of the time, just sitting at my hooking area so I can get at what's inside. So let me show you what I put in there. First off, I need my hooking supplies, right? So I'm going to need a couple of hooks. This one's my favorite. This is the Hartman style hook. I've added a magnet with a little bit of shoe grue because these do not stick, this metal does not stick to magnets. If I don't have that here, it's going to roll off of my frame every time I use it. And the way I decided the position on it is simply like this. It's where my fingers aren't. And I don't even notice it when I'm hooking. It works perfect for me. So find a position that works for you and you can turn your brass hooks into one that will stick to magnets. This is one that was repaired with shoe grow. Um, when Jackson was a tiny puppy, he took a liking to chewing up the handles of my hooks if he got a hold of them. And this one was pretty much gone. So anytime I open up a package of shoe grow and I've got a tiny bit left over, I smear it on a hook that's been chewed up. And this one's getting close where it's almost needs some attention to bring it into shape, but there's a couple little, there's a couple little hollow spots still right here that need to be filled in. I of course want my offset scissors, right? <laughs> and offset scissors are offset, called offset because they break this way. They don't break the other way. So when you are cutting, the cutting part is flat against your hooking. Oh, let me do it this way. It's flat against your hooking, right? But you're, there's clearance for your fingers, so you can get it very level. I had lost the cover 
that I had for it to protect myself when I'm digging in this bag and to protect the tip of my scissors. So I made one out of shoe girl and it sticks very, very well. Um, it's simple, easy to slide it in, slide it out. And it's my favorite color. So you can't beat that, right? Then once you have that, I guess the next important might be your markers. So a Sharpie marker to make any kind of noting on your pattern. Um, just to note that this is a regular Sharpie permanent. This is not the marker I would use on my rug hooking. This is the marker that you want to use. You want it to say industrial or Sharpie Pro, and it always has this fine tip on it. When you read the instructions, it'll say that it's permanent up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we take that steam iron and we put it on our rug, that ink is going to stay permanent. This other marker, not going to stay permanent when we apply the steam iron. So I don't want that anywhere near my hooking. As far as other writing utensils go, I like a Sharpie marker in silver in case I need to do a value study. Most rug hooking events take place in like in a hotel and there is usually a copy machine available at the front desk. So if I need to work up a value study, here's my gray. If not, here's a pencil that I need to do. Or if I need to draw a line in a backing, there's the pencil for doing that. I also like to bring a marker in my favorite color. This has nothing to do with rug cooking. This has to do with my bullet journal practice. And I like to have a colored accent with me. This one just happens to be my absolute favorite color. So that goes with me. In addition to that, um, also for bullet journaling, I'm going to have some repositionable tape. Um, mainly this makes turns any piece of paper into basically a post-it note and I can stick it into my journal and then take it back out. I can make it permanent with permanent tape when I get home, but while I'm traveling, I like to have the repositionable. I also like to have a little bit of liquid paper with me so that I could fix something in my journal. Next, let's talk about this little guy. You might not know what this is. This is called a burling iron. And a burling iron is basically a pair of tweezers, but it's a pair of tweezers on steroids. These are powerful. Now, the ones that are not the name brand don't tend to work as good. So if you've gotten a cheapy one, that was not a Chandler's, then you'll think, why the big deal? This is what you need to use to pull up those little tails and to make those adjustments. It will grab very securely, like it's got a hold of my fingernail. Try doing this with your pair of tweezers. Chances are it's not going to hang on to your nail. This one does. If you need to get splinters out, it's also great for that. Nice protective cover using shoe grow. The same thing that I fixed the hook with. If you want to learn more about shoe grow, I'm including a link below. And then because my nails often get messed up, I love these little glass nail files. They come in their own protective case. They're easy to open. They're relatively cheap. I'll put a link in for that also. And because I might get a headache. There's my Tylenol. I don't have to take a break. I don't have to go back to the room. It's right there. And of course, every girl needs her lipstick, right? One of those goes in. What else? A little bit of breath spray. I love this. And my finishing tool. You can get these free with any order. Simply just um, add it to your cart. And if you can't find it, Put it in the notes and I'll be sure to throw it in for you. It's really just a little piece of cardboard, but it measures that magical inch and a quarter and I don't have to read a ruler. Maybe I'll get my project done during rug camp. Who knows? The other thing is a needle case. 
And this one, I don't know where I got it, but it's a nice long one. That's what you want to look for. And it's got to be long enough to hold your longest needles. And most of my needles, my regular sewing needles are relatively short, but my finishing needles are longer. And I want to be able to put those in here and close it and keep them secure. So it's got to be at least long enough for those. And these are doll needles, D-O-L-L. -L. I'll put an Amazon link in the bottom below for that too. And we'll keep them securely in there so they don't go anywhere. You might also want your name badge. Um, love this little name badge. Um, anything will work, but this one's nice and heavy duty. Most rug camps will give you a name badge, but just in case they don't, think about your fellow rug hooker. How hard is it to remember people's names? Wouldn't you be grateful if everybody wore their own name badge? And in today's climate, you need a little bit of hand sanitizer. Find that small bottle. That will fit. This will get me easily through a week. And I'm not sure why this was in there, but it was. I'm going to keep it in there because it doesn't take up any space. And who knows when you need a zip tie. Pop that in. Work it all the way to the bottom. And there you have it, my toolkit. And it stands up on the floor, on the table, just beautifully. So I absolutely love how this works. Um, and when I'm in rug camp, I can zip it open. And there I have access to everything inside. Easy peasy. Now, what have I forgotten? What is in your toolkit that's not in mine? Add it to the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.